Okay, good afternoon students. In the last class, I have discussed about unijunction transistor and photodiode, right? So UJT is a three terminal device. It has, uh, UJT has two layers. It has two layers, right? It consists of lightly doped n-type and heavily doped p-type silicon materials. So the two bases B1 and B2 are attached to the both ends of n-type surface. It is also called as double base diode. So it is the block diagram of UJT and the equivalent circuit of UJT. See here a circuit symbol, UJT circuit symbol. Here emitter terminal is connected to p-type material and the two bases are connected to n-type material. See here it forms a p-n junction. Here it forms a p-n junction. So that's why the equivalent circuit the p-n junction diode is represented from emitter to this base region, right? So here this is RB1 and this one is RB2. So the voltage across RB1 is V1. The voltage across the diode is V gamma. In the circuit symbol, in the UJT symbol, emitter is nearer to base 2 than B1. Emitter is nearer to base 2 than B1. Okay. So from the equivalent circuit, the internal resistances of two bases are represented as RB1 and RB2. RB1 and RB2. The terminal emitter terminal is closer to B2 as compared to B1. So the resistance RB1 is more than the resistance RB2, right? A pin junction is represented by a normal diode, so with V gamma. So when the emitter diode is not conducting, then the resistance between the two bases B1 and B2 is called interbase resistance. So that is interbase resistance RBB equal to RB1 plus RB2. So if you see the working here, when the emitter voltage is zero, when the emitter voltage is zero, with V1, the pin junction diode is in reverse master condition. So there is no emitter current. There is no emitter current. So when we apply the emitter voltage, for example, if emitter voltage is, is 2 volts, the voltage across RB1 that is V1 is 5 volts. In this case, VE is less than V1. Then the diode is in remains in reverse biased condition, right? So when VE is greater than V1, the diode becomes forward biased and the emitter current is flowing, right? Okay, so if positive voltage V is applied to emitter, the pain junction will remain reverse biased as long as V is less than V1. If V exceeds V1 by the cutting voltage, the diode becomes forward biased. Now the holes are injected into N type bar. These holes are repelled by the base 2 terminal and attracted to the B1 terminal. So here the accumulation of holes in emitter to B1 region reduces the resistance and hence the emitter current IE is increased. Okay. So if a negative voltage, if you apply the negative voltage to the emitter terminal, PN junction remains in reverse biased condition, the emitter current is cut off. So then the device is in off state. Okay. So that is the working of the UJD that we have discussed in the last class. So there are the advantages and applications of UJD. So it consumes low power and cost is low. So when it comes to applications, it is used to generate sawtooth waveform. And it is used as a pulse generator. Okay. So what is the photodiode next? Photodiode. The photodiode is a semi-connected device that converts light into an electrical current. That converts light into an electrical electrical current. So when there is no light, the reverse biased photodiode carries a current which is very small. That current is called as dark current. Okay. So when the light is allowed, 
then the photon transfer energy to valence electrons to make them free so hence the reverse current increases and it is proportional to the light intensity so here the reverse current is not dependent on the reverse voltage but it depends on the light intensity okay so these are the vi characteristics of the photodiode so the reverse current depends on the light intensity not on the voltage okay so it is about photodiode so in the last session we have discussed about uzd and photodiode so now in this today's class we will discuss about scr power semiconductor device scr diac and triac so they are the special purpose electronic device so scr means silicon controlled rectifier silicon controlled rectifier see here the internal structure of scr the symbol of scr so scr is one of the most important types of power semiconductor device so it is a four layer it is a four layer see here so pn pn it consists of pn pn so it is a four layer three pn junctions here it consists of three pn junctions so it is a junction 1 this one is junction 2 and this one is junction 3 okay so scr is a four layer pn pn three junctions j1 j2 j3 and three terminals so scr has four layers three pn junctions and three terminals so the three terminals are anode cathode and gate three terminals are anode cathode and gate so the scr is an unidirectional device okay so it conducts only in one direction so scr conducts only in one direction it does not conduct in the reverse direction so silicon controlled rectifier scr is silicon controlled rectifier so it consists of four layers see here it consists of four layers pn pn three junctions three pn junctions and three terminals so anode cathode and gate so it is anode cathode and gate so scr conducts only in one direction so it conducts from so here the current is flowing from anode to cathode okay so it conduct current from anode to cathode see here if you see here, here it is a forward blocking mode this one is forward conduction mode in the forward blocking mode we are not applying any voltage between the gate and cathode we are not applying any voltage between the gate and cathode here we are applying the voltage between anode and cathode so in the forward blocking mode so in the first circuit we are applying the voltage between anode and cathode right so in the forward conduction mode here we are applying the voltage between anode and cathode and gate and cathode okay here it is junction j1 it is j2 and j3 so when the anode voltage is when the anode voltage is positive with respect to cathode and the gate is open the junctions j1 and j3 are forward biased junction j2 is reverse biased so in this case only a small leakage current of the order of few milliamps flows from anode to cathode flows from anode to cathode okay see here when the anode when the anode voltage is made positive with respect to cathode so when the anode voltage anode here we are applying the voltage between an anode and cathode when the anode voltage is positive so if you apply the positive voltage 
to the anode terminal right with the gate is open with the gate is open the junctions j1 and j3 are forward bias and j2 is reverse bias so in this forward blocking mode in this forward blocking mode so if you apply the points to anode voltage and the gate is open right here the gate is open we are applying the voltage between anode and cathode so in this condition the junctions j1 and j3 are forward biased okay so junction j1 and j3 are forward biased and junction j2 is in reverse biased condition and junction j2 is in reverse biased condition okay so then there is no current flowing from anode to cathode only a reverse saturation current or leakage current is flowing from anode to cathode right so when the anode voltage is positive with respect to cathode with gate is open the junction j1 and j3 are forward biased and junction j2 is reverse biased so in this case only a small leakage current flows from anode to cathode that is in the order of few milli amperes okay a small leakage current is flowing from anode to cathode <coughs> so in this position the thigh resistor behaves like a forward blocking mode or off state condition so if you are if you are not applying the gate voltage if the gate is open we can say the thigh resistor that is silicon control rectifier is in off state is in off state right because junction j2 becomes reverse biased j2 becomes reverse biased only j1 and j3 are in forward biased condition okay so in this case only leakage current is flowing from anode to cathode that is in the order of few milli amperes so the thigh resistor is in the off condition if the anode to cathode voltage is increased if the anode to cathode voltage is increased the reverse bias junction will break down j2 will break down so this is known as avalanche breakdown this is known as avalanche breakdown right so if we increase the anode voltage so if we increase the anode voltage the junction j2 will break down the junction j2 will break down so that voltage is called as forward break over voltage the voltage at which the junction j2 break down that voltage is known as forward break over voltage <coughs> okay so now all the three junctions will allow the electrons from anode to cathode so in this case all the three junctions will allow the electrons from anode to cathode so then a large current flowing so a large current flowing from anode to cathode so that current is known as forward anode current forward anode current <coughs> forward anode current see here so it is a forward blocking mode okay the first circuit is the for forward blocking mode in this case we are applying the voltage between anode and cathode with the gate is open so in this condition <coughs> junctions j1 and j3 are in forward biased condition j2 becomes reverse biased right so then only leakage current is flowing from anode to cathode okay so that is in the order of few milli amperes <coughs> so if we increase the anode voltage if we increase the anode voltage then the junction j2 will break down j2 will break down one second okay so if we increase the anode voltage then the junction j2 will break down then the anode current is flowing from anode to cathode right <coughs> see here if the anode to cathode voltage is increased the reverse bias junction j2 breakdown this is known as avalanche breakdown 
so the voltage at which the junction j2 break down that voltage is known as forward break over voltage so at which voltage the junction j2 breaks down that voltage is called as forward break over voltage <coughs> So here all the three junctions will allow the electrons from anode to cathode and the la a large current will flow from anode to cathode this is known as forward anode current forward anode current see here what is latching current and what is holding current so holding current means holding current it is the minimum anode current required to maintain the thyristor in off state <coughs> so latching current it is the minimum anode current required to maintain the thyristor in on state immediately okay so it is about latching current and holding current see here when the cathode is made positive with respect to anode so it is the reverse biased condition when the cathode is made positive with respect to anode see here <coughs> so positive terminal is connected to cathode and negative terminal is connected to anode so in the reverse biased condition positive terminal is connected to cathode and negative terminal is connected to anode right so when cathode is made positive with respect to anode with gate is open here we are not connecting we are not applying any gate voltage that means the gate is in open condition so with gate is open the thyristor is in reverse master condition then the scr is in reverse master condition right here the junction j1 and j3 are forward bar reverse biased here the junctions j1 and j3 are reverse biased okay j2 becomes forward biased then a small leakage current a small leakage current in the order of micro amperes so is flowing through these junctions a small leakage current is flowing right so that is in the reverse biased condition next if you see the vi characteristics see here these are the vi characteristics of SCR, VI characteristics of SCR. So VBO, it is a break over voltage. IL, it is a latching current. IH, it is a holding current. IG is a gate current. So VBO is a reverse break over voltage. Reverse break over voltage. Okay. so these are the vi characteristics of silicon controlled rectifier so vbo is a break over voltage il is the latching current so wait somebody are changing the slides So one second.
okay so it is the transistor equivalent circuit of scr it is it is a two transistor model it is a two transistor model here okay, the two transistors are connected back to back so when it comes to applications it is used as a switch it is used as overlay detector so it is used for power control applications power control applications so it is for controlling the dc shunt motor so scr can be used as a switch overlay detector and controlling the dc shunt motor so when comes to advantage so scr can handle large voltage Large current and power. It is easy to turn on. So the triggering circuit for silicon SCR is simple, and the cost is low. Okay, these are the advantages of SCR. So SCR conducts only in one direction. So it is a unidirectional device. So it does not conduct in reverse direction. Okay. <coughs> So when it comes to disadvantages, the SCR is unidirectional device, so it can control power only in DC power during positive half cycle of AC supply. So that's only DC power is controlled with the help of SCR. Okay, so it conducts only in one direction. So that's why only DC power is controlled with the help of SCR. So in AC circuit, it needs to be turned on each cycle. <coughs> So that is about silicon control rectifier. So SCR consists of four layers, three junctions, and it has three terminals. So anode, cathode, and gate. <coughs> so in the first case, if you apply the anode voltage, if you apply the voltage between anode and cathode, then the SCR becomes in off state. So if you increase the anode voltage, then the three junctions will break down. and the majority carrier current will flow from anode to cathode right so in the reverse biased condition so if i apply the reverse voltage between anode and cathode with the gate is open so only minority carrier current is flowing in the reverse biased condition so now we will discuss about diac so what is a diac So diac is a two terminal device which can conduct in either direction hence it is called bidirectional device hence it is called bidirectional device diac diac conducts in both directions diac conducts in both directions okay see here it consists of two terminals one is mt1 and another one is mt2 so it consists of two terminals mt1 and mt2 so it consists of four layers so a diac is a full wave or bidirectional semiconductor semiconductor switch so that can be turned on in both forward and reverse polarities it can be used in both directions right <coughs> so the name diac diac comes from the words diode ac switch diode ac switch diac diac so it is a diode ac switch right so it is used to triggering the track when used in ac switches so it can be used to, it can be used as light dimmers okay see here so it is a basic structure of the diode and it is a symbol of uh, basic structure of diac and it is a symbol of diac so it consists of two terminals mt1 and mt2 mt1 and mt2 right so it consists of four layers it consists of four layers 
एन वन पी वन एन टू पी टू एंड पी वन एन टू पी टू एन थ्री सो इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर लेयर्स एंड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू टेर्मल्स एम टी वन एंड एम टी टू सो दीज टेर्मल्स आर कनेक्टेड टू पी रीजन्स ऑफ सिलिकॉन सपरेटेड बाई एन रीजन सो एम टी वन एंड एम टी टू आर कनेक्टेड टू पी रीजन्स ओके so it does not have any gate terminal so sr consist of gate terminal but the diac it does not have any gate terminal it consist of only two terminals mt1 and mt2 so diac can be turned on for both the polarity of voltages so that means it it conducts in both directions if you see the working when the terminal mt1 is positive with respect to mt2 when the terminal mt1 is positive with respect to mt2 so the layers p2 n2 p1 n1 starts conducting so when the voltage of mt1 is more than break over voltage okay so when the voltage at mt1 is greater than break over voltage okay so when the voltage at mt1 is greater than break over voltage it starts conducting so once the conduction starts the current through the diac becomes very large so if the current increases the voltage drop across the diac decreases when the current increases the voltage drop across the diac decreases in the second case when the terminal mt2 is positive with respect to mt1 so the layers p1 n2 p2 n3 starts conducting and the voltage of mt2 is greater than the break over voltage right so in the both cases the currents during blocking region are very small and are called as leakage currents so here the break over voltage of diac is about 30 to 50 volts and voltage drop across the device is 3 to 5 volts here the break over voltage is about 30 to 50 volts as compared to triac the operating characteristics of diac is similar but it has no gate terminal okay so that's why it is called gateless triac gateless track so diac consists of only two terminals mt1 and mt2 there is no gate terminal in diac okay so these are the va characteristics of diac when mt1 points to so if you apply the voltage at mt1 more than the break over voltage then the diac conducts in one direction so in the second case if you apply the more voltage at mt2 if you apply the voltage at mt2 more than the break over voltage then the diac conducts in reverse directions in the diac conducts in reverse direction right if you see the applications of a diac so for heat control and universal speed motor control so for heat control we use diacs for motor speed control we use diacs as a triggering device for track we can use the triggering device for track okay so these are the applications of diac <coughs> okay so diacs are widely used in ac applications diacs are widely used in ac applications
so it is a two terminal device which can connect in either direction so hence it is called bidirectional device so diag is a bidirectional device see the structure of diag see here the layers are so it is n3 p2 n2 p1 right so it can conduct in both directions it consists of four layers n1 p1 n2 p2 see here n1 p1 n2 p2 so n1 p1 n2 p2 right so when the terminal mt1 is positive with respect to mt2 so the layers p2 n2 p1 n1 starts connecting so when the voltage of mt1 is more than the break over voltage so once the conduction starts the current through the diode becomes very large so that is one case okay in the second case when the terminal mt2 is positive with respect to mt1 so the layers p1 n2 p2 n3 starts conducting when the voltage of mt2 is more than break over voltage okay so here the break over voltage is generally about 30 to 50 volts so as compared to track track so it can track consist of the three terminals but the diag consists of two terminals right so diag is a gateless track so these are the vi characteristics of diag so these are the applications of diag so as a triggering device for track the diag can be used as triggering device for track so for heat control for university motor speed control so light dimming these are the applications of diag okay so with this i am going to stop the presentation so in the next class so we'll discuss about tunnel diode track and remaining other special purpose electronic device okay thank you